Hey, Steve Mignani here doing the Junkyard Crawl at Berniston Auto Wrecking in Berniston, Massachusetts. The snow is gone, and let's celebrate this 1957 Chevrolet Bel Air four-door hardtop. Now, you got to remember, there's no B-pillar on this thing. The doors don't have fixed door glass uh, frames. And 1956 was the first year for a Chevrolet four-door hardtop. Now, you got to remember, 57 right here, the final year for the Tri-5 Chevys. And what started out in 55 is a way sportier version for Chevrolet. In 57, became almost a baby Cadillac. Uh, truly a revolution to have a four-door hardtop. And again, these were available, this body style in Bel Air and the 210, not in the 150. Those were strictly gonna be four-door sedans. Now, when I talk about four-door hardtops, what am I talking about? Well, this is Speed Age magazine right here. One of the great magazines from the 50s. Uh, March 57 with the big Chrysler 300C on the cover, but more importantly for us now is their road test of a 57 Chevy. Now that's a sedan. Notice the fixed B pillar in the middle, the door frames that are rigid and always there. And again, it's all new, but again, on the next page, we see a little more about this. That's the hard top right there. No fixed B pillars. In fact, its own uh, rear B pillar, if you will, with the sort of Cadillac-esque shape right there. So again, Chevrolet was a low priced car, but don't tell Cadillac these things were basically looking like a baby Cadillac. Now we see inside the 120 mile an hour speedometer right there, went up from 110 of 1910. 56. Again, as the V8 went from 265 to 283 cubes, 120 was very possible. The headlight right there, interesting to see that sort of grill effect. Let's move now under the hood to learn more about what that grill was. Now, before we open the hood, we can see here on the cowl right up here in 50 Five and 56 right here would be vents stamped into this pillar up here. And that would be something that went away for 57. Now in 55 and six, that's where air entered for the inside for occupants. Well, for 1957, as that picture in the magazine shows, over the passenger side headlight, which would have been right here, was that vent. That was actually where air got in through a tube and then went into the passenger compartment. Let's open the hood for a better look at that. And before we do it, check out the bomb site hood ornaments right here, 1957 only, but you know, was uh, World War III just around the corner? I don't know, you tell me. The end of a missile, an ICBM getting ready to take out the Ruskies. Anyway, under the hood, oh, okay. There we go. Yeah, we look here, and what would have happened here was the air would go into a tube come out here, but it actually traveled through the fender and then into this. This is where the heater would be. And uh, here's the heater blower motor, right like that. And this is how people inside the car got fresh air. But the only downside to that was, you gotta remember 1957, there were no emission controls of any kind on cars. So imagine sitting like in a Los Angeles traffic jam. Yeah, they had them in 57. And the big Lincoln or flathead Ford or Stovebolt 6 Chevy in front of you was belching out blue smoke. Yeah, it came in through the headlight and right into your face inside of the car. So that was one of the downsides of having the, uh, the entry for the air to be so low toward the front of the car. But again, it gave these things a lower profile than 55 and 56, and was one of the many steps, including 14 inch wheels for 1957, which were new, replacing the 15s of 1956. But this is a Motor Trend right here, April 57. We all know the drill. Canceled. But inside, here's a full page ad right here, Chevrolet touting five different engines. Look at this. Now notice it says here, whenever, Whatever you want in the way of power, Chevy's got it, but good. Want rock bottom thrift and sturdiness? What could suit you better than the 140 horsepower Blue Flame 6, the world's best tested engine? First came out in 1929, by the way. V8 smoothness with maximum economy? That's the Turbofire turbo 265 with two barrel carbon 162. Like more bottom end torque and solid go all along the line? Try one of Chevy's extra cost power options. For example, the Turbofire 283 with two, two barrel 283 185 horse, there's also the Super Turbo Fire 283 and even a fuel injected engine. We see that on the bottom in green. Yes, the Rochester Corvette engine could be had in a 57 Chevrolet. And also, that 265, a lot of people think that 60 or 56 was the last year. Not so. In 57, you could still get the 265 for one final year in a full size Chevy, and those engines were painted yellow not orange. That's how you can tell a 265 V8 in a 57 Chevy. But again, this one here, there's nothing under the hood now, 
but uh, we can see the body on frame construction. This was a manual steering car. But again, for 57, you could load out a Chevy Bel Air about as optimally as you could a Cadillac. Air conditioning, power steering, power brakes, power wipers, all of those things very much available in 1957 as Chevrolet moved decidedly up market. Now let's get back inside this, this hard top. And again, no pillar, no nothing here. The beauty of that is with the doors, uh, the windows down, you had the open air of a, uh, nearly of a convertible. Now these cars were so popular that in 1963, AMT released a model of the 57 Chevy. This is the original box right here. And there's a drag version of the car right there. And on the other side, George Barris chimes in with uh, his tips on customizing. There's even a Chevy 409 engine option you could put in here if you wanted to. But here's the thing. 1957 Chevy was, what, uh, was six years old or thereabouts when this kit was released. Who would ever make a model of a car that was that old? Well, it was so popular that AMT decided to invest in the tooling for one of these. But here's the thing. Back in 57, AMT also made a promo. This is the 57... Uh, uh, Bel Air four-door wagon right here. It's similar to the model kit, but actually quite different. It has a metal base and basically a little friction motor here. These promotionals were designed to be given away at Chevy dealers so that little Junior would get a 57 Chevy and maybe convince dad to buy the Chevy instead of the Plymouth. But promotionals, what they say was the little ones help sell the big ones. So again, 57 Chevy, not new in 63, you get these in 57 as a promo, but the kit came along in 63. In fact, this kit is still available today from round two. Now, uh, we'll go around to the back of this one. And again, the four-door sedan has this unique Cadillac-esque B-pillar, which kind of pinches in. The rear window wrap around all the way. This one's basically somehow been flipped upside down. I don't want to move that, but that's the tinted glass, which was an option in 1957. And again, the wraparound rear window, also unique to the four-door hard top. Big trunk on these things. And this one was a V8. We can see right here the big V. So it had either the 265 or the 283. And inside the trunk, yeah, very cool. A lot of room here. We can see the original red paint. Still not too shabby underneath there. Insulation seen on these things to help deaden the sound. The 11 inch drum brakes, here's one of them right here. Pretty big brake. These 11 inch drums were used all the way through the 1960s on full size Chevrolets. Uh, never used on uh, the mid size cars. Uh, Corvettes had these things, but again, the Chevelle never had 11 inch drums except for 1965 on the Z16, but not sure why Chevy didn't use the big brakes on the mid size cars. But getting back into model cars, this is a uh, 57 Chevy by AMT Ertl. This kit came out in the mid 1990s, and it's quite a bit different from the original release in a lot of ways. In fact, we can see this is a two door Bel Air, and the beauty of this thing is the separate frame and just the massive detailing baked into this thing. You can see the frame separate, and it actually has an opening trunk. What? Has a fuel injected motor if you want it. But even cooler, Ravel even tooled up a 57 Chevy. But the beauty of the Ravel one, it's a Black Widow. You can see it's a stripper. It's a 150, doesn't have the Bel Air stuff down the side. And best of all, under the hood, there's that Rochester fuel injected Corvette motor, which was totally available in 1957 in any full size Chevrolet, not just Corvette. But again, the 57 Chevy, a classic then and now. And if you can't afford a big one, you can buy a little one. But the great thing about these is the Cadillac styling, the big tail fin seen for the last time right here in 1957, and how the rear bumper is designed to look like dual exhaust poking through. And in fact, some, in some of these, these did function, but this is uh, just cool V8 jet age styling, the gas filler right here behind the uh, driver's side fin, the tail light would open. There's where you poured your gas right there to hide the door from the side of the car. So again, this is where Chevrolet kind of took on Cadillac in their own backyard for about half the price. So that's the story of the 1957 four door hardtop Bel Air, not a commonly seen car. Uh, now, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the Steve Mag's YouTube channel, uh, ring the bell, share this with your friends, give it a thumbs up. And when you ring that bell, you'll be alerted to the next video, which happens tomorrow morning.